Welcome to today's edition of Dining with the Contessa. Today we're going to be focusing on how to do all of this on a shoestring budget. As you can see from this spread before me, I have quite a lovely set of items for my table. We have our Ave Maria plate, we have our gorgeous bronze spoon, brass spoon, some beautiful metal, this gorgeous eating dagger, handily, skillfully crafted, this beautiful glass made of forest glass, and of course, our guttural flask. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about this one, check out this video over here, where you can learn all the details in a very compact amount of time. So all of these items are reproduction items based on original finds. And as you can see from the price tags on all of these, this can add up very quickly. And I've accumulated these over years and years of spending, so it's not like I just went and shelled out several thousand dollars. But there's a way that you can actually acquire equivalent things for a fraction of the price and locally without having to, say, go to Europe for it. So let's talk about some of these pieces and their cheaper alternatives. So let's first look at this glass. This is a beautiful reproduction, 15th century vault glass, glass, forest glass, glass, and it's a beaker in essence, very common 14th to the 17th century. Lovely, but what about something more locally available? So we have something kind of fun that we found here in Albuquerque actually. And this was just at the local souvenir shop in Old Town Albuquerque. In fact, it really looks more like a fifth or sixth century glass and you can see an example of that here. But it's not terribly far off. The shape is right. It has the swirling piped um, glass around it and you can get this in green with the green stripes instead of the red stripes. And this cost, I don't know, 10 or $12, I think, versus the 30 or $40 that this would cost. Also, this one is pretty heavy. In fact, I could probably use this to um, throttle someone invading my home and it would be fine. They wouldn't. Okay, so that's the glassware. What other items do we have here? So we have the Gouterol, coming back to this. Beautiful wine flask, really handy, but also expensive possibly, especially if you're on a shoestring budget. Then we have this, this beautiful piece of glassware. And as you can see from the picture here, we actually have lots of pictures of these, especially in Italy, where they come in pairs, one for wine, one for water, because social etiquette tip, medieval people did not drink wine undiluted because they weren't alcoholic sots. So you always had one flask with wine, one flask with water, and the servant would mix them for you right there in the glass. So this is my wine flask at the moment, and this will obviously therefore be my water flask. Now, where did I get this? I got this at a Goodwill, and I have several of these just like this. I paid $2 for it, so $40 or $50 even, I think now, $2? Yeah. So check out, scour your local secondhand shops. You will no doubt find these because people buy them to be alcohol decanters and then they just end up getting donated when those people pass on. So tip number two. What other things do we have on our table? Okay, we have our Ave Maria plate slash bowl. It's really a platter. And no, I have not found an exact replica of this in a Goodwill shop but I have found some really nice terracotta mixing bowls. What? And here I was about to tell you about some boring terracotta mixing bowl. No, we actually do have something way better that we did find at a local flea market slash in antique store. So we have this Ave Maria platter. And actually by 15th century standards, this is not a luxury item. It's kind of a middle-class item. But if you look over here, these beautiful examples of Maiolica platters, especially from the Italian peninsula, absolutely gorgeous. A replica like this would run you at least $100. It's really a work of art. But we found this at our local, one of our favorite antique malls. Look at this gorgeous work. And you can see that hatchwork with the beautiful phoenix in the middle the layout, the two tones, so you've got the cream colored with the green, very much a 15th century Italian Maiolica style. And we paid instead of 100 plus $20 for this. And 
someday I'll actually use it. Right now it's actually a display piece, but $20 versus a hundred plus, that's, that's a really good find. So again, it might take some effort. You may actually have to do a little bit of walking around various stores of various calibers, but things like this are out there. And then I will show you the boring terracotta mixing bowl. So also, there's a lot of pottery to be had in Goodwill, Salvation Army, your local um, humane society, thrift shops, etc. Whatever your favorite cause is. They've got a pottery section. Too much pottery is bought. Not enough people actually want it. So bowls like this you can get for two, three dollars. And I have seen finds, archaeological finds. In fact, I'll show you one here from the 15th, 14th, 15th century, 16th, 17th century. The, the model didn't change very much. And we paid $2 for this. And I use this, okay, I haven't used it in a while apparently, but I do actually use this for mixing, for making dough and cake and serving food. So practical both in my modern kitchen and life and in my medieval life. Secondhand stores for the win. Well, I think that's all I have to show you today, but stay tuned for more tips on living the medieval life cheaply with the Contessa. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really want to support my activities more proactively, then please do become a Patreon. Details in the description below. Also, please let me know what sort of items you might like to see me cover or discuss or even provide a tutorial on in the comments. Okay, well, this has been exciting, but I've got to go and do another video on something else exciting. So until then, stay creative. shopping with the Contessa, the Contessa's Cheap Tricks. Today we're going to talk about how to buy things that look medieval and feel medieval and function medieval, but fit a shoestring budget. On today's Cheapo Similar Tricks, we have the tablecloth. Very nice. So here, it looks like a nice tablecloth, and it's got this beautiful blue striping, which is reminiscent of the Perugian towels and tablecloths that you see here and that we discuss in my mid-price market finds video. But this is actually neither a reproduction, even though it certainly has that look, nor is it actually a tablecloth. This is a shower curtain Madonna from, from Target, a purveyor of fine household goods amongst other items. This is actually part of their hearth and hand collection. Hearth and hand with magnolia, I have no idea what that is, but it's part of that collection. And apparently these little knotted fringes are hand tied, I've discovered. This only costs about $20 versus this rep reproduction item, which is 75. But this is very versatile in addition to being much less expensive. You can use it as a tablecloth that looks very much like the Perugian tablecloths, but you can also use it actually as a curtain. As you can see here, in Italy, especially in the 14th century, you have lots of imagery of interiors, especially bedrooms, decorated with curtains that are just like these, used to diaper the walls. So, tablecloth, wall hanging, versatile item, $20, I call that a good trick. So let's talk a little bit about the actual item that this is cheapo similaring for. I just invented that verb too. Hashtag cheapo similars. Um, this, the Perugian originals of these are actually called Perugian, Perugiano, because in the inventories from this era, they are referred to as being towels or tablecloths from Perugia. Right? And that's probably because that was a weaving center for these textiles. The original, as you see here, actually is a um, damask. It's a linen damask. So it has that lovely little lozenge design and it's actually woven in the main body from linen, but the blue bands are woven from cotton, which has been dyed with either woad or indigo. 
chemically, the two dye stuffs are completely the same, and so there's no way to know by chemical analysis whether it was woad or indigo. However, they used cotton because apparently it takes the dye stuff better. And it was apparently the guild of the Fustians who wove these because as per their charter and as per, per the laws in Perugia and probably, possibly in other places as well, they were forbidden from working in anything, or excuse me, they were forbidden from weaving pure linen. And so to get around that, they used cotton for the blue banding. So these kind of tablecloths were used by upper middle class to upper class households. So if you're trying to create that kind of impression, but you don't have an upper-class budget, and this is definitely a way I can recommend going. We have our tablecloth now nicely laid, but I'd like to actually eat something at this table, and I'm not going to put it on this nice, cheapo similar tablecloth. So let me show you a cheapo similar trencher option. This is the original, and this particular wooden trencher is actually based on a find from the Mary Rose, which is a ship that sank in 1507 or 1508. I still haven't looked it up. <laughs> Correction here. <laughs> um, and it sank with all souls on board, unfortunately, in the English Channel. Fortunately, though, every single item on the ship was pretty much perfectly preserved in the anaerobic mud of the English Channel, and they've excavated it, and they've brought all those items up. Objects from daily life that we could never have really believed they had or envisaged properly, but now we can. And so this trencher is one of them. This is a replica. It's not inexpensive. They're 40 or $50, $60, depending on who's making it for you. But we have a cheaper, similar option. Hand flour. Madonna Contess. <laughs> Thank you. This round wooden trencher, which are also attested in certain visual sources at any rate. See here. This is actually a modern German breadboard, and there's some theories that these actually evolved literally out of the wooden trenchers that were placed on the table to go under the bread trenchers so that the juices from the bread trencher wouldn't seep out and end up all over the nice tablecloth. So that's one theory. I have no primary source evidence of that, but I thought you might find that as a possibility interesting. You can find these in Germany <laughs> everywhere in any and all secondhand shops. They are so easy to find. You can get them for a couple of euros. So if you're visiting Germany, or if you live in Germany, or in many places in Central Europe, in fact, this is a great option. Um, if you're living in other places, the former colonies, as it were, might be harder to find such items in secondhand shops and flea markets and even some lower priced antique places, although maybe not. So keep an eye out for items like this on your secondhand shopping adventures because this is a great cheapo similar. Moving on. Okay, so this apple doesn't actually need any utensils to eat, but I would like to eat something other than an apple. And I would like to not get my fingers too terribly filthy doing so, so I would like a spoon. So, Handler, the spoon. Madonna Contest. This is referred to as a, he's adorable, isn't he? Um, this is referred to as a fig spoon because the bowl of it looks like a fig if you were to cut a fig in half, for instance, maybe more like that, <laughs> since figs don't usually sit on the narrow end. And you can find these for anywhere from, um, you know, $15 and up from various replica pewter casters, but maybe that's too much for a shoestring budget. So this next thing I'm going to show you is not actually a cheapo similar because it's actually an authentic replica. So it's a cheapo replica. So hashtag create a Contessa cheapo replicas. Here you can see a picture. These are the wooden versions of these spoons, some of which were found also on that ill-fated Mary Rose shipwreck and others that are found in the Museum of London. So. So these are actual replicas of ones found on the Mary Rose, that poor ill-fated ship, but also there are some extant earlier ones in the Museum of London. And you can buy these actually from Historic Enterprises for $6, which for a reproduction wooden spoon is actually pretty shoestring in terms of budget, and they will last forever. So if you can't afford, you know, $15 or $20 for the pewter version, then I definitely recommend this metal version, or this wooden version. Unfortunately, I did look around for cheapo similars that have this fig shape, 
and they just don't exist because here's the reason. Modern spoons are not shaped like this and any kind of spoon that doesn't have this shape just doesn't have the medieval look. However, the Victorians were really fond of remaking these, especially as apostle spoons. So any um, non-modern reproduction you're gonna find is going to probably be a Victorian reproduction and therefore an antique and therefore more expensive, but also therefore possibly containing lead. So I recommend the inexpensive, very nice wooden replica from Historic Enterprises for cheapo replica. Next, I will need some assistance cutting my meat, perhaps into smaller pieces, although a proper pantler should serve food that's already been cut into the proper bite-sized pieces. But I need implements for that. So, pantler. Excellent, thank you. This, uh, a lot of you asked me in my last Cheapo Similars video about options for silverware that were inexpensive. and. Again, this is not a cheapo similar, this is a cheapo replica. Um, and this is available from Boots by Bohemond, this entire set, basically, for $20. So you get your eating knife. And I think if you, uh, we actually had to sharpen this ourselves. We had someone professionally sharpen this so that it actually had an edge. And you have what is an awl that can be used for actually, as, also as a knife steel. Or some people say that you can use it to actually prick down your meat and then carve. Although, as I say, in the man etiquette manuals from this era on eating, they mention nothing about using this item, but they mention plenty about using the knife and your fingers and how you should do that. So I'm really kind of leaning towards this more being a knife steel. So for sharpening your blade and also for just having the awl for general use for poking holes in things. Etc. whenever you need it rather than being used for dining. But there's debate about that. So this is a set that's available for $20. It's not, you know, hand forged by a local craftsman, which of course I do prefer, but I understand that not everyone can afford that. I think that for $20, this complete set definitely meets the shoestring budget requirements. And if you are actually interested in spending or laying out a great deal more funds, then I can recommend this video here for the handmade, forged by a really experienced master craftsman in England, Todd Stuff, his complete set, which also includes a gorgeous brass spoon. Otherwise, Boots by Bohemond, you can see here, $20 for sheath, knife, and all. Thank you all for joining me for today's Contessa's Cheap Tricks. Cheapo similars, cheapo replicas, and interesting items you can find in unexpected places. I love to hear from you. Please tell me in the comments below what kind of cheapo similars or cheapo replicas you've found, and please do share pictures. I love to hear everyone's create <laughs> hear everyone's creativity. I love to see everyone's creativity and hear about their adventures. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay creative. shopping with the Contessa, the Contessa's Cheap Tricks. Today we're going to talk about how to buy things that look medieval and feel medieval and function medieval but fit a shoestring budget. Glassware. I actually did some digging around and I found also a cheaper replica glass for you. So this is, you know, this can be very expensive, anywhere up to $50, $60 if I were to buy this by a local glassmaker or from a local glassmaker. But here at the old Hansa, they are actually selling these gorgeous replicas of these beakers for five euros, which is incredibly inexpensive. They're currently on sale, which is why they're so cheap. So if you're watching this, jump on that now. <laughs> Of course, shipping adds a couple of euros or more per glass, I think six euros per glass. So if you want to actually purchase them, I recommend getting together with a group of friends, buying a whole batch of them that will distribute the shipping cost across all of them and make it very inexpensive. So for a replica glass, five euros, six dollars is extremely inexpensive. So definitely, this is not a cheapo similar, this is a cheapo replica. Now that I have my glass, I need a vessel to transport liquid to the glass. 
So we're back to the land of cheapo similars rather than cheapo replicas, but these are really good cheapo similars. Pantler? I don't have Pantler. We have quite a collection here. So these are three flagons of various designs and they are pewter. Two of them are safe pewter and you can tell that because on the bottom of this one, there used to be an angel, but it's kind of faded away. But what you want to look for, oh, it's on the top on this one. So this one has an angel. So you want to look for an angel like this to know that it is lead free because otherwise the pewter is, look here, you want to see an angel like this, which is actually the angel from the top of this flagon. Because otherwise pewter is a combination of tin and lead traditionally, historically up until like the 1950s in some cases. So you want to make sure it has that. This little guy, I'm going to wash my hands after this. Um, has water in it. Has water in it. I don't know how old that water is. I just cleaned it. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> um, and actually, this one does seem to have, it's either an angel <laughs> or, um, it's either an angel or the imperial, imperial uh, eagle <laughs> from the Holy Roman Empire's coat of arms, also the kingdom of Bohemia. So you want to make sure it has that angel on the inside of it or you can use it as a decorative piece, but you should most likely not use it for food consumption. That being said, if you buy pewterware and you want to verify that it in fact does not have lead, there are actually kits like this that you can procure at most any hardware store and you can actually test yourself to see whether the item has lead or not. It's a very simple test. It doesn't require extracting samples or any sort of destructive techniques. So fear not on that account. I do recommend this on any pieces you buy from a secondhand shop, a flea market, an antique store. Please do get these test kits and try them on everything. That includes ceramics, by the way. In my last cheapo similar video, I presented this beautiful Mayolica plate. And I haven't done this yet because I haven't used this plate yet, but we're going to now. <laughs> we're going to go and purchase one of these kits and maybe we'll do a video on that. And we're going to test it to see whether it contains heavy metals. Now, apparently, especially up until the 1970s, nearly all pottery, whether made in Europe or Mexico or America, contained heavy metals because they make oranges, reds, and yellows brighter. And then, of course, a lot of leads, or leads, yeah, a lot of glazes were lead-based. So this makes it especially challenging if you find older pieces to use them as dining equipment. So I really recommend this test big thing for food safety. Now these, you can see from this picture here, these flagons are very, very, very close to the originals from the 13th, 14th, or excuse me, 14th, 15th, and 16th centuries, which makes them a really great find. I think I paid maybe 15 or $20 for each of these. If you were to buy these as a replica, it would be $150, $200 probably. Uh, unless you bought them from, you know, made in Pakistan. And I really discourage that kind of shopping if you can do so. So flagons, of course, they're useful for wine. They're useful for water. I do, however, recommend that you do not let acidic substances sit in them no matter what for prolonged periods of time. Decant your wine into it. Use it to serve at the end of the evening. Make sure your wine is finished and your vessel is washed. Okay, moving onward. A usage note on these sorts of metal flagons. They actually used to put these with wine in them in a bucket of water, as you can see here, often in pairs. So I think that that was probably because one had wine and one had water, because as I've mentioned before, medieval people weren't sots. They drank their wine diluted, but they liked it chilled, and chilled is relative. But if you put one of these in a bucket, then evaporative cooling will take over and it will cool the wine down to the temperature of the water, whatever that is, which is likely to be lower than the air temperature. So if you want to chill your beverages authentically, 
Nice wooden bucket, water, metal flagons, et voila. Last item is actually not dining related at all, but it is a question that a lot of you have been asking me, and so I'll answer it in this video rather than waiting for some specific video. Fabric. Fabric is something you can actually find at secondhand shops across the world in forms you might not acknowledge. Yes, those shops do receive donations of actual, real, honest to God fabric that is just waiting to be crafted into something else. But what they receive more of, and that's you nearly always quality materials, are curtains. And curtains, especially designer curtains, tend to be made from natural fibers that are authentically medieval, and you can recycle, reuse, upcycle those into other garments. So here is a set pantler that I found in a Goodwill in Washington State, actually, in Covington, outside of Seattle. And these are just plain old, boring, white linen curtains. <laughs> white linen curtains. It's about 50 inches wide, which is fantastic for a width. It is a very high quality linen, as you can see here in this photo. Pure white, and it's not a hideous optic white, it just looks like it's a bleached white. And it will be really easy just to pull the seams out, the hems out of this, and that will probably actually, now that I think about it, if I take these hems out, this might actually get up to 60 inches wide. And, you know, lot, curtains are designed to go from window to floor these days, a lot of them. So this one is about, and you're about to see a really high-tech form of measurement here. Watch this. One, two, three. So about three meters plus a little bit extra on the hems. Three meters, and this pair of curtains, this pair of curtains, so six meters of fabric cost me $9.80 of really high quality linen. Good luck finding high quality linen like that off the bolt for that price. So yes, it may take you a little more time because you'll have to do some serious shopping and going from store to store and checking their inventory, but always go to the curtain section. White linen is the fabric you want for your undergarments because you can boil the hell out of them in your washing machine and it won't do anything to the dyes because this is the layer, as you see, that sits on your skin and gets all the ring around the collar and keeps your nice garments from developing ring around the collar. So white linen undergarments for the win. Curtains are your friend. So this isn't really a cheapo similar, but it is a Contessa's cheap trick. Thank you all for joining me for today's Contessa's cheap tricks. Cheapo similars, cheapo replicas, and interesting items you can find in unexpected places. I love to hear from you. Please tell me in the comments below what kind of cheapo similars or cheapo replicas you've found, and please do share pictures. I love to hear everyone's create <laughs> hear everyone's creativity. I love to see everyone's creativity and hear about their adventures. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay creative. Welcome to Shopping with the Contessa Mid-Price Market Finds. My last video on Cheapo Similars got a little bit of flack for encouraging people to be inauthentic, which I absolutely was not doing. But I thought I would address that by presenting my viewers, you, my beloved public, with mid-price options that are in fact replicas of original medievals. So if you're enjoying this content and you would like to see more of it, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support more of it, then please do consider becoming a Patreon. Okay, cheap plug over, let's get to it. A key element of any table is of course a tablecloth. You wouldn't eat off of bare wood, peasants do that, but elegant contessas do not. I have actually a gorgeous tablecloth, several of them actually, that I've acquired over time. These are replicas of original tablecloths that are actually found in uh, several collections. One is in the V&A Museum in London. 
This is often referred to as a Perugian tablecloth because in the inventories they're actually referred to as such, as being linens from Perugia. And the reason for that is most likely because Perugia in Italy was probably a center of weaving for them. So these are made out of linen and um, cotton. The body itself, this beautiful damask with its lozenge design, which you can see here up close, that is made of linen in the original one. The blue part, this gorgeous design here that you see before you, these are griffins actually, and uh, eagles up here. This design is actually in cotton that has been dyed with indigo, and that is authentic to the originals, although they can't tell whether it was indigo or woad because the chemical dye stuff is the same. And at that point, indigo had apparently started making its way into Europe for use as a dye stuff. They theorize, though, that the cotton has been dyed blue and not linen then used for dyeing blue. Two reasons. One, apparently cotton takes blue dye, the blue dye of indigo or woad better and more vibrantly than linen does, and is also easier to dye, apparently. Number two, though, they also suspect that it was the Fustian weavers who had to weave, or didn't have to, but they did weave these tablecloths, and they were banned by law from weaving in pure linen. So they skirted around that by throwing in some cotton design elements here. This tablecloth is available from Historic Enterprises, here, and uh, it costs about $75 now. And I know you're gonna say, oh, 75, is that really a mid-price? Well, for a replica, I do feel it is. These things last for a long time. I've had this exact one since 2006. And it has also traveled the world with me. I have used it on countless tables. Many inebriated individuals have done horrible things to it, and yet it still stands here today beautifully decorating my table. It's extremely long, as you can see in this inset here with us holding it from end to end. It covers a very long table. So I actually use this not just for great, great grand feasts. I use it in my daily life. Whenever I have company over or whenever my children aren't here, <laughs> this covers my table. So I really do feel $75 for a replica table, tablecloth of this caliber is definitely a mid-price market find. Next on our table is going to be the thing, the layer that will actually protect the table from, well, not me, I'm a perfectly neat eater, but from other louts who perhaps are not so fastidious as I. So, Handler. Madonna Contest. Thank you. This is a towel, a serviette, also called a napkin in the period. And as you see, it matches this tablecloth. And this too is referred to in inventories from the era as a Perugian towel. It is woven in basically the same manner as the tablecloth. You have the linen cotton uh, blend of the white ground in that damask with again, the same lozenge damask weave pattern into it. And of course the blue is once again created by cotton that has been dyed with indigo. Now, this towel you can purchase from Historic Enterprises for a mere $14 plus shipping and hand handling. And their shipping and handling can be a little expensive, but if you buy lots of them, say in a group order, then the per towel price of shipping and handling, of course, goes down. Now, you may not have noticed, but this towel is very long. It's, it's about four or five feet long, so it's a decent size. And you're probably wondering what kind of towel is that long? Well. Medieval towels are, as you can see here with these servers decoratively festooned with their towels, they had many purposes. One was really literally the badge of the server who was serving feast. He would drape it over his shoulder. The pantler or the butler, for instance, when serving the Duke of Burgundy, would actually bless the towel before bringing it out, kiss it as if they were performing part of the host in a mass, the Eucharist in a mass. And they would carry it on their shoulder, they would go and present food to the Duke and he could then use it to actually wipe his hands, wash his hands as part of the hand washing ritual that preceded the commencement of dining at a feast in such a formal court. So that is one use for it. Another use is actually, as you see here, uh, it's basically a placemat and it wouldn't be one diner who would use just one of these towels. You would actually have at least two trenchers on a towel set like this, maybe three, depending on how cozy one wishes to get. And it would obviously be used then to protect the larger, more difficult to launder tablecloth from, again, 
diners who are not as fastidious as I. Another use, of course, is, as you see here, covering bread, um, also swaddling babies. You know, this is sort of the duct tape of the 15th century. You can use these towels for almost any of this. But also in your modern life, I use these as nice hand towels in my bathrooms when my children aren't here <laughs> to, to make them utterly filthy. Um, I use them in my daily life. And this towel I have also had since 2006. This towel has traveled the world. It has been to countless living history events, reenactments, other sorts of medieval encampments. It has lived a damned hard life. And yet it's still here, still going countless washes, still beautifully blue, still beautifully white. So $14 for a towel like this that can serve both a medieval and modern purpose, I definitely think that is a mid-price market find. Next item on shopping with the Contessa, mid-price market finds. Okay, so we have the table set with cloth and linens. It's, it's beautifully covered and protected, but I'm, I'd like something on which to put my food. So once again, Pantler. This is a wooden trencher. This particular one is actually perhaps more early 16th century. Uh, they actually found some of them on the Mary Rose, as you can see here, which was one of a, a, a ship that sank in 1508, I believe. Well, you'll see something here probably if I didn't get the right date. But it sank intact, so it has literally tens of thousands of objects from daily life that were more or less perfectly preserved in the muck of the English Channel, of La Manche. And this was one of them. So for years, it's 2001, for 23 years, 24 years, I don't know where the time has gone, for 24 years, I have been using this trencher, my best friend in the whole world. Linda Allen, if you're watching, ha ha ha. Um, she went on a people to people trip to England and brought this back with her as a present for me. Talk about a best friend that knows you. And I have been using it since then um, because I didn't, I didn't really have anything that was more accurate or authentic for my particular court. But I did some research in preparation for this and found that there is a vendor selling authentic metal trenchers, which is what the upper middle class and upper classes were dining on for the sort of 14th through 16th centuries. And you can see here, I haven't had a chance to actually order it yet. I'm gonna order it after this. <laughs> um, as you can see here, they're beautiful metal made of pewter or brass. Um, maybe some might've been silvered. There are, I think in the Richard II, I believe in the Richard II inventories, there are actually silvered ones. This is available for 30 pounds plus shipping. Now 30 pounds, I think translates to about $40, 39 or $40 right now, plus shipping. But again, if you find other things from this particular vendor or you go into a group order, then that sort of distributes the cost of shipping over multiple items. And I can almost guarantee you that this trencher is going to last for an extremely long time. So these metal rectangular metal trenchers I've, I've read that the custom was to actually put then your bread trencher on top of that and the metal would keep the bread from sullying your linens and any juices that flow down i that's apocryphal though in the sense of i've only found other people saying that and i haven't found that in any of my books of caring as they're called my medieval manuals of etiquette and table manners but um, if i find something more solid on that you'll hear it in a future video so trencher metal trencher is the best option and only 30 pounds that's a pretty good deal for a handmade replica item trencher table linens how am i going to get my food to my mouth well okay it's the 15th century i can use my fingers actually and there's an etiquette for that future video but i would like a spoon so pantler here we have Adorna Contest. thank you my dear here we have what is referred to in modern circles as a fig shaped spoon because the bowl actually looks like a fig in profile. Right? And this is a replica. Um, it's referred to as the main head because it has this little lady here. And here's an up close of that so you can see that. These come in multiple forms actually in the originals, in the extant ones. Can have an acorn head. Uh, there's some apostle spoons actually from this period for those who are familiar with that custom. 
and they are, again, very durable. I've had this one uh, for 26 years. No, that's definitely a lie. 16 years is a better number. I've had this one for 16 years. Like all of my other household goods, this has gone on many progresses with me about the world. Thankfully, you can buy replicas of these for a very reasonable amount of money. Here is a lovely version from Billy and Charlie's Fine Pewters in the United States. Only $20. That's a very reasonable price for a piece that is handmade from a hand-carved mold, etc., etc. And I can highly recommend their goods. I have many of their items actually in my collection. So, spoons for the win. Here is the spread. It's almost complete. One last item that I would like to show you. Pencler. This is... Madonna Princess. This is a thread. We're teaching him his court manners. He's enjoying it immensely. So this is a threaded glass beaker. And um, it's very fine. It's very durable, despite the fact that this glass might seem thin and delicate. But again, like all of my other items, many miles under its belt. And I have actually found a place where you can purchase these for an extremely reasonable price at the old Hansa. So this, basically a beaker about this size, a little bit bigger, they're a little bit, theirs are a little bit wider. You can actually purchase right now for about $10 a piece, plus shipping. Same thing applies. If you want to purchase a glass like this from them, go in with a group of friends in your local area, or not even so local, or a group of friends, then you distribute the cost of shipping across the entire purchase and it becomes minimal. Of course, obviously, Old Hansa is in Estonia, for those who don't know, and the cost of living there is somewhat lower than here, although it's going up pretty fast. So if you can afford to say support your local glass blowers, then please do, but this is mid-price market finds. So this is a mid-priced option from Old Hansa for your glass purposes. And of course, if you want to learn more about this particular kind of glassware, forest glass, that sort of thing, then please see this video here uh, for interesting and delightful details about this funky looking glass flask. So that's the end of today's little shopping guide. Please do take a moment to leave in the comments your own mid-price market finds. We're always looking to increase each other's enjoyment and knowledge. And I'm really interested to know what you have found that maybe I haven't because I need more stuff. Shh, not my husband. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay creative. Smiley face. Are you happy on Mama's lap? <laughs>